Hagen Garvey will set a, another blistering pace down into turn one and two as you see the field go by. Just a super, super afternoon for racing here in Pensacola. Yeah, Dave is, he's strong. He, he's a little bit stronger than Mike right now. I, I'm convinced of that. And, um, but he's being smart. Dave's been racing a long time, and he, he will definitely use his head and not do anything uh, that'll take a chance. But uh, well, he, wants, he wants to lead this thing. Yeah, plays like this, too, it doesn't do you much good. If you can get out front of the field, go ahead and go. I mean, it, just riding doesn't seem to gain you anything in Pensacola. No, I mean, you can't uh, you can't sit back. I mean, it's, it's 328 laps, and that's a long time, but it, it doesn't seem it in a race car. I mean, and apparently uh, the black flag has been waved for uh, 38, which is John Crow. As we look at Mike Garvey now, the RC Cola McBee-sponsored machine, he is the leader as uh, we've got 13 laps complete. Dave Mater runs second, and Jeff Purvis holds on just out of the frame there in the third spot. Pretty good start to the race, I thought. Yeah, I'm impressed. Um, everybody's using their head. Like I said, though, this is a, this is a great field of cars, and uh, when you got 70, 80 cars trying to make a show, um, everybody that makes it's yeah. Got John, what we're trying to pick up there, folks, is John Crow's car. Apparently, some smoke coming out of the rear end of it, so that's uh, some pretty big problems as he's going to have to bring it to the pit road. And uh, we got ourselves another major spin over here on the uh, on the front stretch, which is going to bring the caution out just in time for John Crow to maybe make some adjustments. Says uh, we've got one car uh, down against the wall. That's the uh, Brown Motorsports machine, and I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, John. Uh, that was a, definitely a break for John. He he's got a valve cover leaking, and uh, if it's cracked, it's it's they need to get it off and get it fixed. So, but that did give him a break to uh, try not to go any more laps down because I believe he's lost a couple. But uh, yeah, that's a shame to see for Brown. Brown, uh, it's like he he took a. Uh, He's run this race quite a few times, and uh, it's a it's it's a real difficult thing. Again, it's it's just a matter of the uh, of the luck of the draw, and uh, uh, unfortunately, David's not going to have much luck this afternoon. No. We are, have got about uh, 15 laps complete as the cleanup crews are going to get out here and get us a clean racetrack at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida. We're glad you're along for the ride. We're going to take this break. We'll be back with more of the 28th annual Snowball Derby right after this. And welcome back, everybody, to the 28th Annual Snowball Derby alongside Eddie Sharp. I'm Pat Patterson, and we're still cleaning up out on the uh, racetrack with our second caution flag this afternoon. Daryl Brown, I inadvertently called him David Brown a few minutes ago. He was just uh, the back end of uh, another one of those bad uh, uh, luck deals, Eddie, that happened so many times. You know, two cars get sideways, you get on the binders, don't know where to go, and suddenly the wall, uh, you know, gathers you up. And uh, that's certainly what happened to Daryl Brown. You see his car there being towed away. He was a Southern All-Star racer most of this year, was fourth in the points, ran the, uh, it's going to run the Hooters uh, Cup Series next year. He's got a trucking business in Birmingham, Alabama. It's a Frankie Grill car, which Frankie now will get a chance to do some more work <laughs> yeah. on, unfortunately and uh, the uh, qualified fifth but uh, was just didn't have the uh, in the engine uh, or, or actually had a problem in qualifying Eddie and ended up uh, 23rd starting today's field so he was looking to pick his way uh, through the thing but hey you become a victim in this in this business pretty quick yeah yeah let's go down to Mark Allen okay Pat a further update on the travails of John Crow they determined that it is a cracked valve cover the only way they could possibly repair it since they'd already been black flagged just prior to that caution is to replace it. And they are doing that, but Crow will go at least three laps down. That's a tough break for John Crow. Thanks, Mark. And uh, they will do a lot of work to try to save as many points as they can and keep John in his best position. I want to say one more thing on Daryl Brown's car, which we just looked at uh, being towed away, and that is that that motor, it's a Hunter motor, but it's prepared by Joey Arrington. And, of course, Buddy Arrington, a longtime Winston Cup campaigner, want to say hello to uh, Buddy wherever he's at. Hopefully tuned into us today. And great to see Joey doing well with doing the rebuilds on the motors and stuff that's, uh, that he's doing. Great to see the Arrington family still big time involved in, uh, in, in automobile racing and uh, short track racing. Mike Garvey continues to be our leader right now. Dave Mater is in the second spot. Jeff Purvis is in third. Look who snuck up there to uh, the fourth spot, Eddie. Yeah, I was watching him. Uh, he started out just kind of watching what was going on. Bobby Gill is running good. He's just uh, buying his time. He's he's a smart racer. He's got plenty of horsepower. I watched him in practice yesterday, and uh, 
he could just drive anywhere on this place he wanted to, and that's one of the secrets to the day. Yeah, and, and it, it, again, it's one of those deals where here you got to sort out who's going to race in the Snowball Derby. I think what happens here is you get 40 cars, 42 cars, they all start, and very quickly we get down to who's going to race, who's going to be lucky, and who's going to be a part of this thing, uh, you know, for the afternoon. And that's uh, two caution flags again. One to go is the signal from the starter as uh, everybody tries to get as much heat into those tires as they possibly can. Uh, everybody's on the same tire here. Everybody's dealing with the same problem in yeah. terms of tires and surface, right, Eddie? Absolutely. Uh, what they're doing, you know, they're getting them clean right now. This racetrack's dirty and gritty, and when you slow down, you've had heat in your tires, and they're very gummy, and they're going to pick up anything they run over. So right now, you want to make sure your tire is as clean as possible so when they drop the green and you go back down into one, uh, that she sticks as good as she'd been all day. So uh. Yeah, and we're going to have a double file restart one more time here, which once again gives us that opportunity to, to have some problems. Pace car yes. down on the pit road. Mike Garvey brings the field out of turn four, and the green flag waves for the third time in the Snowball Derby this afternoon. Jeff Purvis moves around some lap traffic, and uh, he pulls right back behind Dave Mater. Mater once again right in behind the leader, Mike Garvey, and another pretty good start here. No problem so far as we're working the uh, 23rd lap of this 328-lap affair. Five Flag Speedway, Pensacola, Florida. Great to have you with us this afternoon. If you're back in the snow of Wisconsin or uh, maybe uh, the middle part of this country dealing with some cold temperatures, Sorry. <laughs> We're yeah. loving it down here. Glad glad I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It is really great to be you here. Know, I, I've been watching Dave Mater, and he is really putting the heat on Mike. And uh, Mike's fast. I'm impressed. Mike was one of the ones that didn't go out and practice yesterday. And we got a car yeah. that's uh, fenderless on the left-hand side here. I can't even get the, uh, the number off the car, but I think it's the number 29 car. He'll bring that into the pits and get some reconstruction done on that fender. As, uh, once again, it's Garvey, Mater, and Purvis. And I guess we can go ahead and start talking. Ooh, Jeff Purvis almost Ooh. runs over Garvey as he, or excuse me, over Dave Mater. But Dave checked up because Garvey that, checked up. Yeah, that was a chain reaction. Uh, Dave's been real fast coming off of four. He's, he's really got a lot of heat. He's getting a better bite off the corner than Mike is. And uh, I think Dave and then uh, Jeff Purvis got a really good bite and it just always a chain reaction. I think you're going to see Mater go by him pretty quick. Yeah, I think that uh, Mater realizes that he's, he's, getting, uh, he's getting behind by, by just riding. He starts to once again try to work up on the back of Mike Garvey. But Garvey's got good horsepower, obviously, because Mater's not doing anything with him in the straightaways. No, he, he's definitely got good horsepower. And like I said, he was one that didn't practice yesterday. And uh, there was a lot of cars practicing, trying to get ready for second round qualifying. And uh, he must have felt he was pretty good, and I got to admit, he is. Well, here we go on the back stretch. Uh, almost a little bit of a, a bid for the lead there, but Dave Mater thinks twice. But I think what may, may change Mater's mind about getting around Garvey is the fact that Jeff Purvis is about to get around him. He's got to be tough, but you also got to drive with that mirror a little bit and know that Purvis is coming. Yeah, it's, it, it's a tough situation. I mean, you know you want to go, and you know you're faster, and you know the guy behind you is thinking the same thing. He's Mater gets a fender under Garvey, thinks about it again, and backs out of it. And I, I tell you what, if Dave doesn't hurry up and get around, him, Purvis is going to get impatient in a minute. Uh, I don't know. Purvis has an awful lot of racing experience, and uh, he's, as long as he's not being threatened, he's uh, he's definitely going to keep uh, riding right there and wait and see what's going to happen. The 89 car, which uh, was in a pitch just a minute ago, that is Jesse Lucio out of Pensacola, Florida, all-pro glass sponsors that car, and he's got it fixed. He got the fender tore back off of it, and he's back out on the racetrack as we continue to uh, watch the front three here at the Snowball Derby. There is Mario Goslin. He is the 1995 uh, points champion for the Hooters Cup cars. And uh, I'll tell you, Eddie, you talk about a guy that had it his way this year, but he really, really had to work hard uh, each and every one of those races. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there's nothing easy about these, this, this series uh, with Hooters coming into it and, and, and doing a tremendous job with it. A lot of talent stepped up. And uh, anyone to run in the top ten, uh, top 20 for that matter, um, they're all the best. I mean, Get, getting tight up front. <laughs> yeah. We continue to watch those, and uh, it really, really is. Uh, you know, Purvis keeps looking, and Bader keeps looking, and well, somebody's it, going somewhere in a minute. It's just a matter of time, because Mike's doing an awful lot of slipping and sliding right now off of four, and that's going to eat the tires. And uh, I'm sure Dave, with his experience, and Jeff, they see that. And as you can see in the picture a couple times, Bobby Gill slid right up there. He's watching, too. 